Hello YouTube, Owen again from uniquelightingcompany.com uh, Nothing to do with lights today, normally it's me and my unusual handmade lights and lamps and stuff would work, but today is something completely different. Uh, today I am in my living room in my very old French stone house which I'm recently started renovating and today I'm going to be talking about the process of pointing an old stone wall as you can see behind me where I've started. Uh, it's very typical of an old French stone house. You start off with walls which are covered in this old lime sort of render, crepy as they call it over here. And I've been doing a lot of research in the best way to bring it back to nice stone and then point them. And I struggled to find a very clear sort of guideline video which explained everything in enough detail without being too technical. So I'm hopefully going to cover that here. So um, yeah, I'll turn the camera around and I'll show you what I'm doing. Okay, so here we are, very typical of an old French stone house. All the beautiful stone walls that are all hand built, you know, three, four hundred years ago. At one point, we're all covered in this sort of render, which is like a lime based sort of like, a, what they call it, crepe, so it's like a plaster sort of cover them up. They thought it kept them warmer and they wanted a neat finish. But underneath is this beautiful old stone, which uh, a lot of people absolutely love, makes a great feature wall. And uh, you know, it's there, so bring it back to life and have it on show, and it's just beautiful. So I'm gonna show you the process. Uh, there's a few steps. The first step really is the preparation of the wall, which means the hacking off of all the old render, which when it's as old as this, like I say, it's at least three, four or 500 years old, comes off quite easily. A uh, hammer and chisel or a hammer drill, just be careful, a hammer drill can leave loads of marks in the stone underneath, so I personally use a hammer and chisel, chip it all off, comes off lovely, and then what you're left with afterwards, as you can see what I've done in this corner here, is the old stone, but it's still covered in, you know, little bits of, you've got the brown mud, which is the dirt that the walls were actually built with, that's all they were built with, was stone and dirt, there's no cement or anything else holding it together. So all you're left with is the stone, but they're covered in this mixture of the brown mud and the white lime chalk mix, which was over it, which isn't very nice. So the first step is to prepare the walls. So I'm just gonna grab the, the special tools that I use for it, and I'll show you exactly what I do. Okay, so when I started the job of um, cleaning up the stones, uh, I wasn't sure what to use. I've seen a few people recommend a few different things. Um, I got a stone hammer which I grinded into a fine point. I've got a little handmade sort of like rake tool. And you know, they've they, they done the job. It's not particularly hard, it's not cement or anything. So even with a little hand sort of tool like this, you can actually rake out a lot of what's in the joints, which is what you need to get out to put the new joint in. Like I say, you can see it's only soft dirt, that's all it is. But in some places it's a lot harder, so I used a little pointy hammer and it just seems to take for ages. And then as someone, um, I saw someone doing, I actually ended up finding the best way it was a cordless drill. And it's actually got a metal drilling drill bit in it, which I sort of started using in the joints and it was doing a great job. Uh, it was originally a bit longer than that and then it snapped after a day or two. And I thought, okay, just get another one. And I thought, well, okay, I'm trying it. And now I find that the actual shorter drill bit especially as it's got the, the sharper sort of square head on it now, uh, just does an even better job. It's about 40 mil, about four centimeters long, which is what you want the joint to be raked out to anyway. So now all I do is use a cordless drill, get it in the gap. It's a bit easier doing it with two hands when you're not holding a, uh, a phone. But um, yeah, you get the idea. And I really did find that this was by far the easiest way. It's actually quite satisfying to do. The bit gets in all the little places, gives you just the right depth. Gets all the horrible old stuff out. Yeah. 
see how you get the idea. I really thought that a drill bit in the stone like that wouldn't last long at all, but I've using I've been using that little broken drill bit now for uh, about four or five days, and it just does the job perfectly. And like I say, it's actually a metal cutting bit because they stay sharper. I tried a masonry bit, and they actually smoothed off and went blunt almost within an hour. So the metal bits are actually much better. So that's the first step. You want to get in there as deep as you can. You don't have to go all the way back, but get all the rubbish out. And then all you do is you get a soft brush and you brush off all the surface dirt, which is going to be again a mixture of the dirt and the old chalk and all that. So get rid of all that. And then uh, you can get a wire brush to brush off all the old little bits off the surface of the stone. So um, yeah, and then we move on to the next step of getting ready to actually apply the new pointing. All right, so here we are. Uh, now, what you use to do the pointing with is actually very important. I've done loads of research into this because with old stone, you really don't want to use cement. You definitely never use sand and cement because it just blocks up the stone, stops it breathing, uh, stops any movement, and it will just end up being the worst thing possible for an old stone wall. You really don't want to use cement. What you want to use is a mixture of chalk or lime uh, and sand. So, but even with those two ingredients, all you do is mix them up. Normally it's a ratio of roughly between three to one, four to one, or five to one. Uh, the one being the chalk and the rest being the sand. Even then you've got options as you've got fine sand, coarse sand, uh, you can have yellow sand, paler sand, red sand. All gives you different finishes and different colors. So what I have actually gone with is a ready-made product which you buy in the big bags here. Uh, it's actually a mono couche, which is actually like a sort of render type base. Um, but I I spoke to two French building merchants over here and a couple of French builders, and they all recommended this product. Comes in loads of different colours. This is what's called, I think it's a Tom Pierre or a Pierre Cassé, which is like a natural sort of what it would have been originally, like a typical beige colour, as you can see it. So I've used that. Uh, there is actually a very slight amount of cement in the ingredients, which I was quite surprised at, but then when I asked them about it, they said it's such a small amount, it's literally a bonding agent, and it's not going to be enough to affect the stone. Uh, the big advantage of using a product ready bought, ready mixed in a bag like this, is getting the same colour and texture every time. It's okay if you've got a massive stack, you know, a big pile of sand, and you've got to mix up the exact quantities of like, like I said, three to one, four to one every time. If you get it wrong each time, you're gonna end up with a slightly different color, which when you've got a whole wall done, could take so long to do it, you're gonna do it in batches. And then if you find that one day you've run out of sand, you get another lot of sand and it's more red, more orange, more yellow, you could end up seeing a difference in the, the, the color afterwards. So all I've gone was gone with these bags. It's maybe slightly more expensive, great big bags. What are they, 20, 30 kilo bags? They're about 10 euros, so yeah, it would be slightly cheaper to use a big bag of just chalk and sand mixed up yourself. But for me personally, to be sure to get exactly the same colour every time, I'd rather go down this method. Uh, you can do a load in a wheelbarrow cement mixer, I'm not sure if it sticks to a cement mixer. Uh, it's just me on my own, I'm just doing the odd afternoon, a couple of hours here and there, so I use a bucket. About an inch and a half of water in the bottom of the bucket, and then just keep pouring it in. Now you want quite a dry mix. Something dog's just bothering me here. Jensen, <laughs> you right? You want quite a dry mix, uh, otherwise it's just too soft <coughs> when it comes to pulling it in the joints, it'll just spread out. So you do want, what I normally do, get it on a trowel like that, and just make sure it doesn't just fall straight off. You know, it's got a real nice, thick, stodgy, sticky sort of mixture. Like I say, lime is completely different to sand and cement. It gives you a real good sticky sort of product. Exactly what you want. That is just right. So, yeah, you want to mix this up a little while before you're going to use it. Let it sit there for a good 20 minutes or something. And then it's ready to go. So I'll just take this over to the wall now, the bit I'm doing, and I'll show you exactly um, the important bit of how, when, you know, how it comes to applying it to the wall. So, Okay, so here we are. I've done the wall up to here, as you can see where there is... The joints are done in the bits I've done yesterday, and then the rest of the wall is, as we said, we cleaned it all out, drilled out the old pointing, brushed off to get all the dust out, so there's no loose dust in there at all. And then a very important step is to actually spray down the wall, just lightly with like a garden sprayer or a hand sprayer, uh, into the cracks to dampen it down a bit, uh, which helps it to stick, it stops it drying out too quickly, 
Uh, this is an inside wall, obviously. It's not too hot, not too cold, but if you, especially if you're doing it outside in baking sun, because it's the same process for an external wall, you'd really have to damp it down and even keep on damping it down. So just don't let it dry out too quickly. And then basically you'd have like a hawk and trowel system. I mean, in this case, I'm actually just using a very small, because I like doing small amounts at a time. Small bit here, so I'm gonna put on a good dollop of the lime. <laughs> Like you say, it's quite a thick, dry texture, that, which is what you want. You can work lime really well. You can keep on mixing it and working it. Last for ages. And then you've got a lot of options with the um, the trowels, the actual way to apply it. Uh, originally, I looked into grouting guns and bags. Uh, read up a lot of people's opinions, and a lot of people just said it takes too long. The amount of time it takes to get the consistency just right. Uh, filling it up, cleaning them out, it's just not worth it. So I've tried, you've got loads of different shaped trowels, you know, pointed ones, triangular ones, rounded ones. I've tried them all. And again, you might find a, a bigger one better, but I find the perfect one is this thin, narrow one, rounded at the end. And it's just, just the right sort of size. It's all you want to do. I mean, the object is just to get this stuff in the gaps as far back as you can. And then it comes to doing the finish, which I'll, we'll get we'll get to that. You've got a few options. So basically, you know, you can either hold your board up to the gaps and just keep pushing it in. It looks very messy at first, but don't worry, we'll get back to that. So you can just keep pushing it in that way. You can pull it on the trowel itself and just keep doing it until it's right pushed at the back. Like I say, all you're doing is the object is just to get this stuff in all the joints. It's going to look amazing when it's done. It helps the stone wall, really holds it all together. Gives it a good, you know, brings it all back to strength and everything. Get it right in there. Looks great. Keeps a lovely feature. Like I say, these walls have been here. At least a few hundred years you know you're not just some places you want to cover them up but if you want to keep them best way to do it now obviously in some places you can have great big gaps if you've got a really big gap just keep filling it up or just get some small stones and hard bits to poke in there you know to fill up the really big gaps and just make sure you've got this at the very front uh, in places and if you see it like here you've got very small cracks where it's almost literally stone touching stone like here, you've got two stones pretty much next to each other, but you still want to try and get a little bit on there. This stuff sticks quite well. So even though it's not actually doing much, when it comes to the finishing, it's gonna look great and you'll see all the joints. Now at the moment it looks awful because it's all over the place and it's messy, but we can't do anything about that yet. We have to wait until it dries out, so we'll get to that. Now this is a method I've been using. I've seen people do it completely differently. I've seen people use their hands with great big thick rubber gloves. You always want to wear some gloves when handling lime because it's quite caustic and burns. Uh, I've seen people make it even thicker and literally just cover the whole wall in it with their hands or bigger trowels. And then they use a brush to bring out the stone again. It might be a slightly quicker way of doing it. Personally, I find that way you hide a lot of the stone because you lose all the edges, the definition of the stone. Uh, it's definitely a lot more messy. What you end up brushing off to bring the stones back is a huge waste of the stuff. It just ends up on the floor and in a bin. So I personally find that this way it's a little bit slower, but then there's a lot less work to do after. So you probably save just as much time as you do that way. Uh, yeah, there's different ways of doing it. Uh, you can have the joints come right out to the front so that they're flush with the walls. It gives you an almost smooth sort of wall. Uh, you can have you can leave the joints so that they're quite far in, like here. So you've got the stone sticking out. Uh, when my dad done his, he done a similar sort of joint to this, and then when it was nearly dry, he went along all the joints with a sharp trail and actually cut like a square edge on all of them gave you like a really sharp sort of finishing edge. And it looked amazing. It took a long time for him to do it. I helped once <laughs> and uh, it took ages, but ended up with like this really sharp sort of finished 3D sort of joint on all stones. It looked great. 
But anyway, I'm just doing it this way for now. So all you want to do, you're not worried about any marks or anything in there at the moment. Just want to get as much in, like I say, the gaps as you want to or as you can. It's going to help as well with keeping drafts out of the wall. If you've got cold air coming through, if it's an external wall and that, it's going to help with that. And bugs coming out of the wall as well, if you're bothered about bugs. So you're just getting it in there for now, as deep as you want it. And when it comes to the actual finished look, it's a completely different process, which comes in a couple of hours time when it's dried off. Well, I say a couple of hours, it can actually be um, longer. So one thing you want to be careful of is mixing up a huge amount if you're just doing it on your own, because you can only put in so much in a day. And if you're going to do it later on in a day or in the evening, be careful because if you haven't done the next step, which is the cleaning and the brushing off, if you haven't done that and you're waiting to go to bed, then you're sort of stuffed because by the morning it will be too dry to do it. So you just have to time it right. I personally find it's normally about three or four hours after this step that the next step comes of cleaning them up. So we'll come back to that in a minute. I'm just going to do a little bit more so you get an idea. Like I say, with the vertical joints, you want to spread the stuff out. When it's this texture, you're going to drop some of it on the floor. I've got a, an old bit of lino down here. Try and get it on the trowel and then it sticks easy enough. So just get it in any way you want. Like I say, you're really not looking to get a good finish yet. That comes next. It really does stick quite well, especially when it's been dampened down a little bit. Yeah, this is this step. You get the idea. You know, you can do it. Use a much bigger horse and trowel and get more done. Personally, I just like using the little bits and doing it gradually, a little bit at a time. I've got a bucket right next to me. I'm not up a ladder or anything. So, anyway, do this roughly a bucket full of what I just mixed up. We'll do roughly a square metre, maybe one and a half square metres, depending on the size of the, the joints. You know, some walls are going to have more stones, smaller joints, bigger joints, it varies. So, yeah, it depends roughly. So anyway, I'll come back in a minute and I'm going to leave this dry for a few hours and um, I'll show you the next step. I'm going to carry on here, right? Okay, so we're back again now. Uh, it has been about four hours since i had done this, the exact same part of the wall where I left the video last time. Uh, it's been about four hours and going to try and show you as clearly as possible that um, it's now it's not completely dry because that would be too late but it's still got a very slight sort of um, you know it's still pressable it's still malleable just a little bit but the difference is that you can easily brush it off now uh, if we'd done this even an hour ago you'd find that using a brush and it'll just simply come off in the brush and it just make a big mess and it's just smear it all over the stones Whereas what we now need to do is the actual finishing touch. Now, this isn't a quick process. Uh, a lot of people actually say that this part actually takes just as long, if not longer, than actually applying uh, the lime. So um, anyway, this is what I do. Uh, choice of brushes. I've got a plastic bristle brush here. Uh, it's quite soft, uh, all plastic. It's okay, it depends exactly on the stage of just how dry it is. If it's not too dry, this works just well. Uh, if it starts going a little bit hard, then you really need the metal bristle brush. Uh, this is a brass bristle one, it's fairly soft. It's not really rigid one, and you'll end up just ripping it out. So you want something a little bit soft. And basically all we're doing is gonna take off all the rough bits, which have gone onto the stone. For example, we see sort of like this bit here. You just wanna take off anything that's gone on to the stone while still leaving behind as much as possible of the actual joint within the stones. 
and what you end up with there is the absolute maximum amount of the stone on the show, which is what I want. Because obviously I'm doing this to keep the main feature of the stone. As I mentioned before, there's definitely quicker ways of doing this where you put on, you cover the whole stone in near enough, the whole stone in the, the lime, and then you get a really stiff brush, even stiffer than this, and you just go over the middle, revealing the stone, which gives you a nice sort of, you know, smooth finish, but you hardly see any of the stone at all. You just end up with a big pile of stuff on the floor. Whereas this way, you end up with still, you know, 99% of the stone face on the show, which gives a lovely finish, keeping the main feature, which is the stones. So, yeah, it doesn't take too long. A little bit tedious, but you've got to get the timing just right. If I'd done this a couple of hours ago, it would have been too soft, and it would have just come off in the brush, and this would have been full up with sort of wet lime. But now it's just about right. It doesn't matter if you get the brush marks onto the actual joints. Uh, these are parts of the wall which I've done a couple of days ago, and it's got the brush marks which just gives it a slightly textured, rough sort of finish, which, you know, it's got sand and grain in it anyway. So that's completely natural and how I'd expect it would have been done centuries ago. So yeah, any bits on the front of the stone, take them off, which leaves you just the joint. If you got any of the trowel marks in the lime, uh, sort of like here, you can just sort of see like the round sort of marks of the trowel, then go for the softer brush, uh, like a plastic bristle one, and you can sort of just run over that, and then take them out whilst giving it a slightly textured sort of finish, get rid of any marks and traces left by the tools within the actual joint, a couple of marks there, brush them out, and then again the wire brush for getting the actual edges off the stone. You're going to need a combination probably because it just depends on the actual thickness of the, the lime you're taking off, how dry it is, how hard it is. Have a, have a play and experiment. I've tried a really stiff metal brush which I couldn't get on with. Um, I've seen a couple of people use a much softer plastic brush like this, like a scrubbing brush, which does again, it works. It just depends on exactly how dry the lime is. It depends how easy it's come off. But you really want to do spend just a little bit of time on this, this part, because this is what gives you the finish. There's no point spending all that time applying the lime and pushing it into the joints and cleaning up the stone and everything, if you were then not going to finish it nicely, and be left with um, not very nice edges. So it's worth taking a bit of time here. To get some nice finishes and it will all be worth it once you've spent I mean, it didn't take long. I spent about two hours this afternoon when I started and I've done probably roughly a square metre here. Uh, I've done another small couple of patches over there. Uh, if you're wondering what I'm doing here with this odd sort of line, because uh, I've got quite a bit of stone to do eventually in this room, I was actually a little bit worried that because I've got stone floor as well, I was a bit worried I'd have too much stone on show, so I'm actually using this section here of the original lime plaster render I've actually kept and rounded off. And I'm going to keep that and paint it so I've got a bit of a contrast in between the stone and the original render. So just to break it up a bit, I can always hack it off and go back to stone, but I don't want there to be too much stone. I want to try and keep a bit of a balance and have it as a feature rather than just a overwhelming sort of thing in the whole room so that's why I've got a strange patch in the middle of the wall but yeah like I say the only problem with doing this is that the waiting time in between applying it 
and being able to brush it off neatly. The mistake I'd done, I think this is the first or second time I've done this, I started applying it, I think about five or six o'clock in the evening. It took me ages because I'd only just started doing it. And of course it wasn't dry enough to this stage until about, I think it was about 11 o'clock or something at night in the end, I was up down here to brushing it off because if I'd left it until the next morning, it would have been not impossible, but much, much harder to brush off. So I just want to get this bit of timing just right. And if you do it in a warm, warm day or a house with the heating on, yeah, it might only be an hour or two. So it be much quicker. But anyway, you get the idea. So I personally find this brush, metal bristle soft, and then just to actually finish it off, a softer brush. You can do it in patches, like obviously I've only just done this bit today. And by the time it's dry, because it will change colour a little bit until it's completely dry. And I think it was roughly about here, that was what I'd done two or three days ago, so it's a bit lighter. And it just blends in lovely. As soon as you get the brush marks on it, you know, to rough it all up and make it rustic and textured, it blends in absolutely lovely. Uh, just a couple of things I forgot to mention when I was actually applying the lime. Uh, it's quite basic. You want to start from the top of the wall and work your way down, even though I'm at the bottom here on the floor, it's because I've already done at the top. Uh, you want to work from the top down, because if you start at the bottom and then you go up higher, you're going to have debris and dust, and when you spray it with water, you're going to have all that dirt dripping down to your nice, neat pointing. So start from the bottom going up. And if, for example, like me, most people, you're right handed, <coughs> you want to start applying the mortar towards the right and then when you have a piece of mortar in you then want to go along and push the new mortar into that bit so that you're not pushing into nothing you're pushing against the mortar you've already got in and then you build up a line and before you know it you're all the way along so yeah it, it, it's a great procedure it can be a little bit boring and tedious but it's well worth doing personally I think when you end up with a beautiful old lovely stone wall like that doesn't cost much at all to do. You can get it done even cheaper if you mix the lime and your sand yourself, as I mentioned. But yeah, in my opinion, when you've got a whole room that's been done like that, lovely, well worth keeping the original feature. So yeah, like I say, I struggled to find a video which really explains the best way to do it. Uh, hopefully this will help someone. So yeah, good luck if you give it a go. Let me know how you get on. And thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.